Good morning, ladies. It's Mr. O'Sullivan. Today we're doing lesson 4-6, Important Theorems for Proofs, Practice with Proof Vocabulary, Ed Puzzle. Today you are just doing an Ed Puzzle assignment. There is no Delta math. There is no classwork. It is just this Ed Puzzle. So today's learning target is I can apply my knowledge of geometric terms for marking an image and forming a conclusion. Today we're going to be looking at two new properties. We're going to be looking at the symmetric property and the transitive, oh, not the symmetric property, the transitive property and the substitution property. So before we go into that, we are going to need to look at some vocabulary. Reflexive property. The reflexive property is when a quantity is equal to itself. So for instance, when we're looking at geometry, we're looking at segments and angles. So for instance, I'm just going to say, if I had a side length and I wanted to name it side AB, I can say segment AB is congruent to AB. We also did it in our algebraic proofs when we said like three is equal to three, five is equal to five, and so forth. As long as you have the same thing on both sides of the equal, it's good. The symmetric property is an equality that may be expressed in either order. So if you wanted to look at a side length and we can go back to side AB, we can say segment AB is congruent to BA. We also saw this in the algebraic proofs where we had x equals 3 and we could flip it around to say 3 equals x. It's just flipping it around. And the transitive property is when you cancel out the diagonal or you cut out the middle man. So basically go from the point of attack to the point of interest or whatever. So the transitive property if you look, I have A equals B and equal, B equals C. So if I'm telling you that A equals B and B is equal to C, then I can say A, B, and C are all equal to each other, but that's way too much th many things to write. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of the B and say that A is equal to C. So whenever your statements and reasons are set up in this form, we're going to be using the transitive property. Here... When you have substitution, I'm saying A equals B, C equals B, and if A is equal to B and C is equal to B, I can say that they're all equal to each other, or I can just say that A is equal to C. When you do substitution, you're cutting straight up or down or canceling up and down, so I can cancel out my B and then just say A is equal to C. Notice, you're still getting the exact same conclusion, but with the transitive property, you're canceling your diagonal, with a substitution postulate or property, you are just canceling straight up or straight down. And I still get my same conclusion of A equals C. I'm giving you the heads up. When we do formal proofs, transitive and substitution are often used interchangeably and you don't really lose points for them if you say transitive over substitution. Typically, I just say transitive. But for today, we're going to try to make sure that we use the postulates correctly, so please pay attention. So remember, we always mark our images. So here's our givens, and we want to come up with a statement and a reason. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so whenever I mark angle congruency, I use semicircle, so angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. And now angle t 2 is congruent to angle 3. If you look, angle 2 already has one semicircle, so I'm just going to put one semicircle on angle 3. If you think about it, all these angles now have one semicircle, so I know that they are all congruent. So if I know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, then I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And if you look, this is an example of the transitive property because I'm canceling my diagonals. So I can say angle 1 congruent to angle 3, and it's by transitive property. And that's it. Now, exact same setup, just a different order of the givens. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, one semicircle, one semicircle. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 2, one semicircle here, so there's only going to be one semicircle on angle 3. So if you think about it, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, Angle 3 and angle 2 are congruent, so I can still say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. But this time, I'm not going to say transitive, I'm going to say substitution, because look, I'm doing my cancellation straight up and down.
our next example where we have segments. Segment AB is congruent to CD. I'm going to mark that with a tick mark. AB congruent to CD. And CD is congruent to EF. Well, if you look, all my segments have one tick mark, which means that they're all congruent to each other. So if AB, CD, and EF are all congruent, then I can say that segment AB is also congruent to EF. And if you look, this is an example of a diagonal. So when I'm doing a diagonal cancellation, I'm doing transitive. So I can say AB and EF are congruent by the transitive property. Angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. I don't even have a visual here. That's what's nice about this, and there's no visual. Angle ABC congruent to angle DEF. Angle DEF is congruent to angle GHI. If you look, I got the same thing in both lines, a DEF. So I can say angle ABC is congruent to angle GHI. Ooh, that's my health insurance by the transitive property because I'm canceling out my diagonal. Last but not least, DE is congruent to AC. DE is congruent to AB. Well, if you think about it, if DE and AC are congruent and DE and AB are congruent, then I can say that AC and AB are also congruent. And the thing is, I'm canceling up down, so therefore this is a substitution. Now we have one more, and then we're gonna do two mixed reviews from when we did this a few days ago. So in this example, I have L is parallel to M and N is parallel to M. If you look, if L is parallel to M and N is parallel to M, then I can say L is parallel to N. And if you look, I'm doing a cancellation of up, down, so this is substitution. Now, BD bisects angle ABC. If we look at this visual, BD bisects angle ABC. So remember, Bisect means to cut into half or to two pieces. So if you look, I'm cutting angle ABC. So start at A, go to B, end at C. So I'm cutting this angle right here. If you look, I already have my one and my two. So I can say that angle one and angle two are congruent to each other. And your reason would be an angle bisector creates two congruent angles. If you want to, you can write this, an angle bisector creates two congruent angles. Or if you go to extra help or geometry support with Ms. Daniels, she might have told you a trick that I accept and everyone else accepts. You can just write definition angle bisector. And I would accept that it's 100% correct. Now our final example, PQ bisects RS at T. So I am cutting, I'm cutting RS at T. So if I look, PQ is bisecting RS, and it's cutting it into half. So if I look, I'm cutting RT and TS to be congruent to each other. So I can say RT congruent to TS. And my reasoning would be a segment bisector creates two congruent segments. Or, one second. If you go to extra help, you can say definition bisector. And that's it for today.
Well, you should say segment bisector. One second. We should be a little more sophisticated. If you want to take the easy way out, you have to say the extra word. You have to say segment bisector. Because it's basically just saying, oh, I'm using the definition of a segment bisector, which is a segment bisector it creates two congruent segments. So there is no delta math. It was just this Ed puzzle for today. Tomorrow we're going to be learning about the addition postulate and the subtraction postulate. If you have any questions, email myself or Miss Daniel. Have a great day, ladies.